So uh, lovely to uh, be here with all of you. Uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to uh, an interesting uh, day. Uh, I at least would try and make it uh, as interesting as possible and as simple as possible for you all. Uh, the idea here for us uh, today is to talk about, uh, in very simple terms, the basics of uh, moving pictures and understanding what exactly moving pictures are all about. And uh, if you if you saw the introductory uh, uh, videos that have been shared, uh, we've talked about uh, you know various different aspects that we will try and uh, address uh, during this uh, session. Uh, some of these are going to be as what you see over here. Uh, you know, we we look at what exactly are the essential essential elements of an image, and uh, how. Uh, we as human beings are not very different from the technology that we are using. In fact, all the technology that we use is an extension of uh, ourselves as, uh, uh, as, as what our systems are all about. So uh, just give me one second here. I'm trying to get uh, the video controls back. Yes, there we are. Okay, so starting off with the uh, how do we as human beings, how do we see things? I mean, most of us uh, who are looking at things around us, very rarely do we realize that there is a very elaborate machinery that is going on uh, behind the scenes in our head, uh, in our minds that is actually allowing us to see. So uh, let's take a, you know, a quick look at, let's break down a little myth that we have. Most of us feel that we see with our eyes and, uh, what I want you to do, we'll, we'll start off with a very small, quick little exercise with all of you. I want all of you to, to close your eyes. Uh, just completely shut your eyes, don't look at the screen and uh, pay attention to what I am saying. Uh, there is uh, an open field, grass growing, there is a cow standing in the middle of the field grazing on the grass and uh, suddenly from behind the cow on the right side of the frame that you are seeing a dog comes running in barking and it barks and startles the cow the cow turns around looks at the dog and uh, jumps to face the dog now and the two of them now are having a little bit of a face off Suddenly, from the left of frame, a man comes running with a stick and chases the dog away. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed, all of you. The man chases the dog away and the cow then goes back to grazing. Now, open your eyes. Did you see the field? Not if you did. Did you see a cow standing in the field? Nod your head if you did. Did you see a dog standing uh, coming into frame? As I was talking. And did you see the cow turn around and face the dog? And fight the dog. And then a man king comes running in and chases the, uh, you know, the dog away with, with a stick. So this is a very simple example that will explain to you that it's not just your eyes that are seeing things. It is your mind that actually interprets a lot of things. Uh, your eyes are just a vehicle for, uh, you know, light to enter it and some information to enter into your mind. It is actually your mind that is creating the image for you, which is why when you closed your eyes and I was giving you a, what is called an audio experience, an experience with sound. Uh, you could see the entire scene play out in front of you, even though your eyes were shut. So this is uh, the first, uh, you know, principle that we kind of play with in moving pictures. This is the first trick that is used or technique that is used in moving pictures because we understand that the mind will see a lot more than what the eyes will see. The mind can do a lot more with information that is given to it 
uh, it is not necessary that all the information be provided by the eyes. Uh, for instance, to give you uh, even uh, a simpler example, which is something that you do every day, every waking moment uh, that you are, uh, you know, awake. Uh, you blink, right? Now, when you blink, if you turn your head and you keep blinking as you're turning your head, you will still be able to describe what you are seeing in front of you. Look at, look at, uh, look around you. Look at your room, look at uh, where you are sitting and blink your eyes as you would normally blink. You don't miss out on anything, right? You do not miss out on anything. You do not, uh, you know, kind of uh, say, oh, well, I didn't see this part of my room when I was blinking. Now, there is a reason for it. The reason for it is that your brain is registering the information. And when it registers the information, it kind of fills in, uh, you know, the blanks. And it, it, uh, it, it uh, does a kind of uh, put in the missing picture. Uh, you know, there's an event of put in the missing picture that is going on every time your eyes are shutting. So the brain is holding on to whatever image it has got for a split second more, which is enough to cover up for the time that your eyes are shut. So hold on to this thought, hold on to this uh, concept that actually one, our brains are seeing. It's not just our eyes. Our eyes are just providing the information. So the mind is creating the image inside. And secondly, the mind is capable of holding on to an image that it has created for a split second longer than your eyes are open. So if your eyes open and shut and open and shut and open and shut as in a normal process, I'm not saying if you shut your eyes for a long period of time and turn your head and then open them, yes, then you will miss out on the, on the scene in front of you because the brain doesn't have the capacity to hold on to the image for that long a time. But if you were to blink normally, you don't even realize that you are blinking in a day. How many of you are very aware that you are blinking? You're not. None of us are aware, just as we are not aware that we are breathing. It's a very natural thing that comes to us. We breathe normally, but we are not conscious of the fact that we are breathing. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, having established this fact that, uh, you know, we are, we are very smart human beings and the human machinery is something that uh, even medical science has not been able to understand completely. There are a lot of things that we don't understand about how our mind functions, how our brain functions, and we are known to use only 10% of our capacity of the brains. So imagine if that increases to 15%, you know, with 10% what we can do, what happens if it goes to 15%? But anyways, this is the technique and the trick and the technology that is now used by uh, us in moving pictures, uh, where we know a few things. One, we know that the mind is able to do a lot many more things than uh, what the eyes are seeing. Two, if you provide the mind with some information or some indication of information, it's going to do a lot of fill in the blanks. So it therefore does not become necessary for us to provide it with 100% information. So long as I'm able to provide it with enough hints, enough clues, uh, enough indicators, the brain will do the rest for us. Now, how does this help us? Let's look at a very simple concept of what exactly uh, visible objects are how do how do things become visible there are three basic components that we require in any uh Vara Lakshmi, you'll have to hold your uh, mouse for a little bit whoever that is please do not draw on the screen thank you uh visible objects require three basic components and this is let's not talk about technology right now let's still remain in the realm of uh, the human brain or the human human system. You obviously need light. It's a very simple concept. Unless there is no light, you cannot see things in darkness, right? So you need to have some sort of light present. You also need to have some sort of an object or a subject present. I mean, if you just have light with nothing present there, it's it's like it's like a white light. I mean, what are you seeing? There is, there is a, what will it show? What will it uh, illuminate? What will it light up? So obviously the light needs some sort of an object on which it has to fall and illuminate the object, light it up. 
the third thing that we need is a viewing device there is no point in having light and an object when there is no device to see it so in this case in the human machinery what do we have we have our eyes as the viewing device natural light or artificial light and some subject so when light falls on an object or a subject it is reflected off the object and it comes into our eyes this is very basic school level physics that you are taught and if you are uh, even younger than basic school level physics right now don't worry you will come to it in a few years they will teach you the magic of how uh, light moves and how objects are illuminated and how you can see stuff but in very simplistic terms look at the combination of these things if you have any one of these items missing from the equation you will not be able to see the object let's take an example i have light and i have a viewing device but i don't have an object nothing is going to be visible because i'm not seeing anything what am i seeing there is nothing there right it's like an empty empty space there is light there and i am seeing into empty space but i don't see anything there assume that we have light and we have a subject there is no viewing device so how do i see it there is no way to see it i need some way in which to see this object i have light and a viewing device or i have a viewing device and let us say a subject but i have no light again it's not going to be visible so this is the bare minimum common uh, aspect or, or or components that are required for us to uh, look at something and say that this is visible that we can see it now this is exactly what happens in technology this is what technology plays with this is what moving picture technology still picture technology photography all this plays as an extension of this very basic concept that there has to be something to illuminate there has to be something that illuminates and then the two of these together should reach another thing thing which captures this information and interprets this information so subject light and viewing device now let us look at a comparison of the human machinery with what you understand of technology i mean all of you are aware of all these things but you may have never looked at them as uh, you know a, looked at looked at them as an extension of your human system what is a camera on your cell phone what does a camera do it allows you to see something you point a camera at something and suddenly with magic there is a, you know an image that forms on your screen so if you look at an external camera or if you pick up a let us say a digital camera for that matter to you know click a photograph or you pick up a movie camera to pick up a photograph what exactly are you doing you are providing you are providing an external set of eyes or an external set of uh, uh, an external machinery which is going to capture the image or get, is going to record the information which is the this is now the viewing device so like your eyes are the viewing device then you have uh just a minute i think all right so <clears throat> what is the screen on your phone just like you shut down your eyes just now and i narrated something to you and you could see it you could view it in your head the screen of your camera is the part that is actually generating the image so i could compare it to the mind because the camera is the eye the screen is the mind the storage which is that where does this information go and get stored when you look at let's say a photograph or you see things around you i'm sure you can shut your eyes right now and you can describe to me the room where you are sitting i'm sure you can shut your eyes right now and you can even describe to me very clearly what is the way to the nearest market from your house how is that possible the only way that is possible is that human memory allows you to store that information 
that what you have recorded with your eyes, what your mind has seen, interpreted, has been stored now in your in your memory, which is what we call the storage device for our electronic items. For our for our phones, we have these small little memory cards and memory chips, and everybody's you know competing. Well, I've got a 64 meg you know gigabyte memory card. Well, I've got a 128 uh, gigabyte memory card. All that is there. All that we are comparing it to is how much of information can we retain so that we can access it again and again. We can reach back into the memory card and we can pull that information back. This is what you are doing subconsciously with your mind. Once you observe something, it gets imprinted in your mind. Once you see something, it gets you remember it in your mind. Your, your mind is storing it. So there is not only is there a computer inside, this computer inside your head has also got some storage capacity and it keeps storing this information. Which is why now and for all the young students out there and tip when you can write it down. And what is the reason for that? The reason for that is that the human mind, the brain is used or should be used to think. It should be put to use as a computing device. It should be put to use for what it is meant, which is to analyze, to think, to discover, to explore. Do not waste that capacity by storing stuff in it. It's not a storage device. So take a notebook and store your information on your notebook so that you free your mind up to think. Okay, now coming back, the storage part we've covered now. We've covered the external camera, which is the eyes. We've covered the internal screen, which is compared to the mind. The storage, which is compared to, compared to your memory. Then you have the brain, which is the processor. Your mind, which is putting all of this together. Your brain, which is putting all of this together. The image that I saw in my head with my eyes closed just now, uh, you know, when uh, I, I was uh, describing a scene to you, all this information is being compiled inside and this information is creating this image for us which is a very clear image none of you i have not painted that image on the screen i have not shown you a photograph on the screen i have just narrated it to you vocally you know it's an audio experience that i have given you so how come you saw it there was some sort of an input that came in that input reached back into your memory to tell you what does a field look like. So you pulled that information from your mind and said, okay, this is what a field looks like. Then I said, there's a cow. Your mind races back, your computer processor turns you know, at full speed and says, what does a cow look like? So you pull the image of a cow from your memory and you place it in front of your mind that here is a cow standing in a field. So all that you're doing is based out of association, based out of what are the experiences that you have had in the past. And as a result of the experiences, you're pulling these bits and pieces of information into your screen, which is your closed my closed eyes, the mind that is there, the projector that's running in your head. You're pulling all this information and assembling a scene for yourself. So not only do we have the capacity to see information, the computer inside us, which is the processor that we have, the brain that we have is extremely critical for us to play around with all this information. Now imagine somebody who has never seen a cow or has never seen a dog in their lives. And you tell them, well, there's a cow standing in a field. What's going to happen? The processor is going to go back into their memory department and their memory slot and say, cow, cow, cow. Where's the cow? Where's the cow? And it says, well, I don't know what a cow looks like. What does a cow look like? I, I've never seen a cow. So what do you return? You return with an empty blank piece of information. There is no information there. So your memory is as important. Your observation is as important. Your retention of information is as important as the information itself and the interpretation of that information. So having said that, uh, let us take a quick look at what exactly the mind does and how does the mind play with these kind of things and, and how exactly do we interpret uh, you know, images. Uh, 
technically whatever we are looking at is a two dimensional representation there are only two dimensions of what we look at in an image but the world is three dimensions there are three dimensions you have let's understand what dimensions are dimensions are a vertical dimension which is top to bottom a horizontal dimension which is left to right and the third dimension which is the depth which is into and outwards you can reach in behind something because there are three dimensions the world is a three dimensional space it is not a two dimensional space but when you take a paper and pencil and you draw on a piece of paper you are now working in two dimensions there is no depth to the paper you can't reach inside the paper and go behind the paper to pick up an object that you have drawn whatever you are drawing is all being drawn on one as what we call plane on one surface and this surface has got a height vertical dimension and it has got a width a horizontal dimension and this is what is called a two dimensional representation you are interpreting something in two dimensions however what you are interpreting could be a three dimensional space which means that when i tell you draw a draw your room for instance or draw a box what are you going to do well you could draw let me try doing this on the screen it's i'm doing using using my mouse to do it so please excuse my brilliant artwork but let's see maybe we'll get something with it, with it. so i could tell you draw a box you could draw a two dimensional box like this and say well this is my box but i could say well okay i this looks more like a square it doesn't look like a box so you say all right let me convert this into a box so i do that now suddenly it starts looking like a cube like a box i could say well let me open this box up so i open the lid of the box and i can see something inside now what have i done i have basically taken a flat two dimensional space which has a width and a height and uh, i have drawn sorry, an sorry object sorry to interrupt so tony so your screen has stopped sharing my screen has stopped sharing yes sir oh wow that's interesting can you see it now yes, yes sir okay lovely so i was doing all this drawing and thinking that uh, you, you guys could see it <laughs> thank you for okay, telling me okay. I don't know for some strange reason this is like uh, weird stuff is happening today. So, anyways, uh, I, I hope you guys can see this uh, lovely painting that I made on this on the on the screen. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, looking at you know this is a two-dimensional space that we have over here, uh, x and a y. What we normally represent it is is in two coordinates. This is the y coordinate which goes from top to bottom, and this is the x coordinate which goes from left to right. this is simple mathematics if you haven't reached this mathematics stage in school yet right don't worry you will come to it they will torture you with this somewhere down the line in your lives so better we start now all right so uh looking at this two dimensional space we drew a box but this box now suddenly looks three dimension it looks like it has a depth it looks like it has some sort of uh, structure so what have we done we've created a you know a three dimensional representation but we have done it in two dimensions now if you look at any sort of photograph i mean uh, look at this image that you if you see on on your live these four images that you see here uh, you know which these ones 1 2 3 and 4 these four images that you see here if you look at only concentrate on only this image it's very unlikely that you will guess that this is part of a painting it looks like coffee cups some people have called it you know paint cans somebody has called it you know tea cups uh, you know little paper cups with some liquid in it because you are not looking at these other images at the same time if you look at only this image number 1 it is only when you look at the entirety of the collection as a whole that you realize that it's actually a painting a painting that is made up by these individual components these little little dots now this is what technology is doing 
if i if i draw your attention to this image here on the top it looks like what uh, maybe some balloons or it looks like some oddly shaped pieces of clay or maybe some paper mache it, it's not really very clear what it is it's just some you know blown up bloated bits and pieces of some object put together on a screen but if i move away i get what is here at the bottom of the screen which is this image and i suddenly realize hold on this gray patch or this black patch in the middle over here is actually a part of an eye and this entire image is part of a face that i'm looking at so the further away i move away from this the clearer the image becomes for me now what does this tell us it tells us a very simple thing that if i present to you some collection of dots they could be colored dots they could be black and white dots that's not important but if i present to you a collection of dots and it is presented in a manner that this dot ha dots have got some order some structure some form what your mind is going to do is going to assemble it into an image your mind will create an image out of it though it is just a collection of dots now here is what even print technology does most of you will not realize this but the printers that you have at home are using ink so when you say i want to print a a, a paper a, a document what is actually happening is that individual dots of ink are being sprayed on the paper and that is what is creating the image what is the image the letters that you are typing so if you write a statement my name is siddesh now this has got m y n a m e these are all the letters that you have typed and you say print this what is happening the printer is actually spraying dots on a, on a piece of paper and those dots are being sprayed in the formation of m y n a m e and you say oh my printer has printed my name it has actually printed this image of my name the letters my name so this is what exactly technology is doing that it is using these individual dots to create images and our moving pictures are not very different from this our moving picture technology is not very different from this and we will see how with little small bits and pieces and smaller components our mind automatically creates the image for us our brain assembles the image for us even when the image is not present over there so now i want uh, any one of you uh, to switch on your mic maybe a uh, uh you know amitabh you could do it or pratyansha you could do it just switch yeah. on your mic yes i'm here i'm going to show you something on the screen and i want you to read it if you can okay don't stress okay. too much don't struggle too much i'm sure you will be able to do it very quickly yes sir and what i want everybody else to do as she is reading is to study what she is reading okay try to read the english that is written there on the screen You ready, Pratyansha? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, great. Here goes. Go for it. According to research at an English university, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are; only that the first and the last letters are in the right are at the right places. The rest can be a total mess, and you can still read without a problem. Uh, this is because we do not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. I think we need a round of applause for her. Everybody should give her a round of applause for for having read for having read complete nonsense on screen. Look at look at the way the letters are arranged. This is not the English that we are used to reading. This is not how we spell our words. But without a hiccup, without a hitch, without any pause, she's been able to read through this and I'm sure each one of you will be able to read through it. without any effort and it says why it is possible 
power of your mind power of the brain power of the ability of the mind to be able to assemble and make sense uh, out of what is the information that is sent to it so i'm going to give you you know one one minute each one of you try to read this to yourself and see whether it makes sense to you try to read whether you can go through it and you can actually read it everyone in the chat box is just saying yes we can read it yes we can read it <laughs> so this is uh, you know this is the beauty of the mind and don't underestimate uh, your capacity to interpret things don't underestimate your intelligence don't underestimate your power of your mind of your brain uh, the human brain is a very very powerful organ and it can do wonderful things it can do strange things i mean we've just uh, you know seen right now that we've presented some complete gibberish as what we call it in the written format but each one of you is very comfortably reading it and very comfortably able to understand what is written over here now what is all this leading up to we shall reveal it we shall reveal it soon uh, what i also want you to do now is uh, is very quickly uh, you know take a look at uh, this image that i'm going to present to you on screen and what i want you to do each one of you to do is to focus on the dot in the middle just focus on the dot in the middle all right now focusing on the dot i want all of you to move your head forward don't move your eyes away from the dot but move it forward and now move it back move it forward again slowly and move it back again what do you see you see these two circles moving nod your head if you do well this is not a moving image this is just a static image it's a, it's a still picture it's not moving you are moving your head but suddenly the two circles start you know moving in opposite directions they don't even move in the same direction magic this is called magic this is called uh, you know uh, it's it's actually not an optical illusion I mean, I was watching a lovely program yesterday. There's this uh, fantastic scientist, uh, Neil Tyson Degrasse. Uh, if if you like science, uh, probably you will like his programs. Uh, he talked about this whole concept of uh, optical illusions, and why I like listening to him was that he explains science in very simple terms, in layman's terms, and he explains it in a very interesting way. And what he said was that all of us are aware of optical illusions. It should not be called optical illusions. It should be called the malfunctioning of the brain. because this is what it is it's the brain getting confused and not being able to interpret what this information is and therefore it's creating the illusion of some sort of a uh, comprehensible thing for you something understandable let's put it in simple terms what the mind is doing is that it's interpreting this into something that you can understand because you are very uncomfortable with the fact of what you don't understand the human mind becomes very uncomfortable when it sees something that it can't understand so you try to read meaning into it let's take a look at another one i want you to look at the image on the left and here your mind will get completely confused as to is the book open towards me facing me or is it open away from me so if i show you uh, let me let me uh, let me do a quick uh, let me let me get a book and we'll do this quick trick you know here's a book i have a book with me the book has something written on the front and something written on the back and there's a spine over here so you have something written on it as well now if i open the book like this because there is a reference for the back and the front the pages are very different printed from the cover you can very easily tell me which way the book is facing the book is facing me means the pages are facing me i mean i can i can see with my eyes i can see the pages directly but that's what's happening 
but now look at this image on the left and if somebody can stop doing this artwork i'll be really grateful because it's going to be disturbing for a lot of others who can't make out what is going on so let me just stop the share and rebring it in so that we get a fresh screen over here again there we go now when you look at this image there is no point of reference for your mind your brain does not know what is the which is the front and the back so what does it start doing it starts jumping sometimes you see the book facing you as it is open like this and sometimes you see the book facing away from you which means it's open like that because your mind is getting confused you're not able to figure out what it is so the brain is oscillating it's going left and right front and back trying to figure out what's going on here take a look at the image on the right the steps this is a little more complicated a little more difficult to kind of interpret but let's give it a shot which way is the which way are the steps uh, kind of lit up is the light on the steps from the top or is the light from the on the steps from the bottom again your mind is going to get confused because if you slightly squint your eyes like this you know close your eyes like this slightly and concentrate a little bit what's going to happen is that the light direction will change i'm not changing anything it's a static image at some point you will see the the steps are being lit from the top so you can see the steps coming down and at some point you will see the steps are lit from the bottom which means the steps are climbing up so you are looking at the steps from from the underside like that at one point you will be looking at the steps like that from on top and at one point you will be looking at the steps from below underneath it's just a difference of how the light is if you see the right arrow on screen and follow the right arrow the steps will be lit from the top so these are the tops of the steps but if you follow this arrow then these are the bottom parts of the step you are underneath the steps right now i don't know how many of you can uh, actually figure this out i got one person saying yes sir with a big shout but yes it's it's something that snaps in like that again the reason is that the information that we are providing to the eyes is incomplete it's not complete information it doesn't have a point of reference and because it doesn't have a point of reference what is our mind doing our mind is reaching in the brain is reaching into our memory and saying okay let me put the reference out of all the steps that i have seen which i have seen from the top and it clear, clarifies that for you that okay these are steps lit from the top but then suddenly there's another piece of information that comes in from your memory hold on i've also seen steps which are lit from the bottom and they look like this now your mind gets confused and you say yeah well actually that's also true so what's happening now now you're playing a game of ping pong sometimes you see the top sometimes you see the bottom and you are now fighting this internal battle in terms of which is the right way the fact is there is no right way here both ways are the right ways why because the the quantity of information the amount of information that has been shared with your mind is very limited that information is not complete in itself and it does not have the capacity for you to be able to read the information in its entirety now this all this that i have explained to you the reason for explaining all of this to you is that this is exactly the tricks that we are playing when we are in moving picture technology we talked about those little dots that we put together and the mind assembles an image these are individual dots but we put them together in a little bit of a structure and the eyes look at it and say wow that's an image it's not an image it's just dots put together so partial information given to your mind the mind has put fill in the blanks it's plugged in all the holes and it's created a complete image for you moving picture technology does exactly the same thing all that moving picture technology relies on is that if i show you a series of still images in rapid succession one after the other you know quickly 
I'll show you one image, then I'll show you next one, the third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so on, and keep counting. And they keep changing very, very fast in front of your eyes. What is your mind going to do? The mind doesn't have enough time to look at every image and understand every image because it's now busy trying to catch up with the next lot of information that has come in, which is the next image, then the next image, then the next. So there's a constant bombardment of information that the mind is getting. And this information is also, uh, is also being presented in a sort of an incomplete manner. But the speed with which it is being presented is enough for the mind to say, hold on, there are some blanks in between. I'm not going to register those blanks. I'm going to fill in those blanks. And there, with a magical, you know, kind of uh, experience, you start looking at movement. You start seeing movement. It's not movement. It's a still image. You're seeing all, all that you are seeing are still images. Look at these images that the two rows of images that I have shown you on the screen over here. The top is a series of images that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. These are twelve independent images. And there are twelve independent images at the bottom over here as well. So if I look at them as Individually, I can see, oh, there's a man in some sort of a pose over here. Then he's raised his leg. As I was explaining that these are 12, uh, actually two rows of 12 independent images that you are seeing on your screen. And I don't know whether I, I shared it just now. Just let me try once again. There you go. I, I hope you can see the screen now. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, great. So now these 12 images that you see over here, which is, uh, if you can see my pointer, studying them independently, you can make out very clearly that this is, uh, these are still images. You can make out that there is no movement in these images. It is just uh, static frames, uh, which have been uh, kind of uh, captured by maybe a moving camera, or maybe a still camera. We really don't know uh, what uh, what this is. I mean, for, for all practical purposes, our mind is looking at this and our eyes are looking at it and we are interpreting this as, okay, 12 images of some man, you know, in his underwear trying to jump, uh, you know, over a hoop or jump over a hurdle. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, the ones at the bottom, again, a human figure jumping over maybe, a, you know, a bar, uh, but again, static images one after the other. But what happens, see, what happens when we talk about, if you read what is written over here on top, that if you divide a moving scene into a sequence of still pictures and show the still pictures in rapid succession, this is the catch. Show the still pictures in rapid succession. This is the catch. This is what you have to uh, hold on to. It's not just dividing it that matters. It's not dividing the you know sequence into still images. The fact is that I have to show these still images in rapid succession. Means very quickly, one after the other, I have to keep showing them to you. The human brain will step in. This is all that we have studied earlier or what we're talking about earlier in the first half. That uh, the human brain will now start saying, hold on. This is looking weird. This is not, I mean, what is going on here? This is not a, a still image. I mean, I can see something moving. How are you seeing that moving? It's because the brain is filling in the blanks. The brain is saying, okay, this is one image. Then there's another image. Then there's an image. But the speed at which you're sending this information to me, all I can see is this on the left. Now I am not looking at these 12 images side by side. I'm looking at them in one frame. And the content of that one frame is changing rapidly. So now these are the 12 images that you saw on the left hand side. Instead of showing them side by side, I'm displaying them in the same area, one after the other. And in a rapid succession. So what do you see? Magic. Movement. We suddenly got moving pictures. So which is why 
what we do in moving pictures is actually we are taking a series of still images and we are playing them back for the audiences in a predetermined speed. Now, what are these speeds? We'll also talk about those and we try and understand what all those are. But now, look at what we have on the right of frame. This is what an artist does. Not that a cameraman is not an artist. I don't want to get blacklisted by Amitabh by saying that. A cameraman is a very, very, you know, a special kind of artist. But what an animator does is a different kind of art. An animator understands the concept that if I was to take still images and display them in rapid succession, I can create an illusion of movement. So what if I were to create a series of drawings? And all that an animator is doing is that he is creating a series of drawings or she is creating a series of drawings, which when played back in rapid succession, give you the illusion of movement. It is the same concept. One is called live action, where you are taking a subject, which is a moving living human being or a, or a, or a, a living species uh, or a living uh, you know, thing or even a, you know, something that is not living, and I'll show you that as well. And you are creating this uh, slight change in the position of that uh, human being, and you're capturing those changes. You're recording those changes. Then you take the, all that data and you play it back in rapid succession. What does the eye do? It says, well, the man is walking. Well, the man is jumping. Well, the man is sitting. Well, the man is running or he's doing some activity. In our case over here, he's, do, he's jumping over a hurdle on the left of screen. That's the live action part. So an animator comes into play and he says, well, if I was to draw the same figure as a series of drawings and I play them back, I should get movement. I should get an illusion of movement. And that's what you're seeing on the right-hand side. It's the same thing. Now, what happens here is that the advantage that you get with drawings is that you can do a lot more. And we will see what all we can do. I'll show you some small snippets of performances. Why animation has become such a powerful medium and how you can exploit the concept of moving picture technology and uh, you know, use the concept of moving picture technology to create movement when there is no movement anywhere. There is no movement here, rest assured. I will tell you this again, there is no movement here. This is an illusion that is being created. Your mind is creating the movement for you. What you are essentially watching are still images. And this is what moving pictures are about. Now, today it is a very rare thing but in our days, when we were your age, the younger group over here, we used to get something called a flip book. And I'm going to show you an example of a flip book here. Two examples. The one on the left that you see is actually taking a strip of a movie and breaking it down and printing it on paper and creating a stack. So you take Give me a second. Let me just get a stack of paper. There you go. So if I take like a, a booklet like this and I have a stack of paper, multiple stacks, it's like a pad. And what I am doing is that I am on each page of this pad. I am printing something. Then I go to the next page and I print something. Then I go to the next page. I print something. I go to the next page. I print something. And what am I printing? I'm actually printing what my camera has captured. So let us see what we see on the left hand side. Magic. It's basically still images, nothing but still images. All that you're seeing is a series of still images and you suddenly see the car moving and this lady sitting in the car and, you know, going past the camera. I mean, you can't get a better example of moving pictures than this. This is what a flip book is. Now, what do we do with animation and how can we, you know, take this into the animation mode? 
we do something like this. Watch. Drawings, 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 simple, simple drawings. And suddenly we start increasing the speed of how fast we are showing them to you. Nothing different, just a series of static images. But all that we have done is that we have drawn now instead of capturing them on a camera or a digital device or a physical device. We have not shot anything that is, uh, you know, live. And this is what animation is all about, that you take a series of static images, draw them out in an interesting manner, and uh, you will get, uh, you know, what is called uh, moving pictures.